Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Management TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Hi everyone, we're glad to bring you the latest Tazian news and here they are. Victim's body arrive at hospitals to identify after fire in prison in Indonesia. A government spokeswoman and media report says a fire tore through an overcrowded block in a jail in Indonesia's Banten province, killing at least 41 people and injuring dozens. A doctor says 40 bodies are bringing to a local hospital to identify the process, for some of them had been difficult. Some are being transported to a police facility for further identification. Jadi jenazah ini mulai dikirim dari jam setengah. These bodies are sent to the hospital starting from 2:30 in the morning. Among them, 26 bodies are sent directly from the prison, and another 14 bodies are sent from the nearest hospital. The bodies condition vary. Some of them are identified, and some are difficult to identify. Rumah sakit Sintanala. Kondisi jenazah ini dari mulai yang bisa dikenali, tapi perlu identifikasi juga. Dan sampai yang sama sekali tidak bisa dikenali. Indonesian Law and Human Rights Minister Yasona Lauli, after visiting the scene, says the deadliest fire in the country since the fireworks factory disaster killed 47 people in 2017, extinguished at 1:45 a.m. local time in the Tangerang prison block. The cause of fire is under investigation. A Portuguese and South African killed among 41 people who died in prison fire in Indonesia. The country's law and human rights minister says two foreign nationals were among 41 inmates killed in a fire at Indonesian prison in Tangerang. Minister Yasona Laoli reveals the foreign nationals are from South Africa and Portugal. The foreign ministry is working with the respective consulate to decide on how to contact their families and where to bury them. Police believes the fire at the prison may have been caused by an electrical fault, with Laoli confirming that the electrical wiring had not been upgraded since the prison was built in 1972. Prisons in Indonesia are notoriously overcrowded, with experts saying the phenomenon is partly due to the emphasis on incarceration rather than rehabilitation of those convicted of drug-related offense under the country's strict narcotics laws. Victim's father hopes authorities can prevent similar disaster in the future. The father of a victim in an Indonesian prison fire that killed dozens of inmates says he hopes authorities will prevent a similar catastrophe from happening in the future. I hope this incident, the authorities will be more careful and this sort of things won't happen again. If we think about what their prisoners would have felt about this, they would have been disappointed that this could happen. I rest my son until now. He's a grown man. I know he wasn't a good one, but it's a catastrophe. A government minister says the fire killed 41 inmates in an overcrowded prison block in Indonesia's Banten province and injuring scores more in a blaze. The police says it may have been caused by an electrical fault. According to the government data as September that the prison in Tangerang, an industrial and manufacturing hub on the outskirts of Jakarta, hold more than 2,000 inmates in total, for exceeding its 600 capacity. 
Prisons in Indonesia are notoriously overcrowded, with experts saying the phenomenon is partly due to the emphasis on incarceration rather than rehabilitation of those convicted of drug-related offense under the country's strict narcotics laws. Manila South and spas reopen after government loosens blockade restrictions. Beauty salons, nail spas, and other personal care centers in Manila reopen after being closed for almost a month as the government relaxes lockdown restrictions. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roki during a briefing says the second toughest quarantine measures in place in Metro Manila expire on 7 September, after which the region will be under the more relaxed general community quarantine restrictions until the end of September. Under the new restrictions, beauty salons, barber shops, and nail salons are allowed up to 30% capacity. Restaurant, dine-in services, and religious gatherings are allowed up to 10% capacity. The moves comes despite the Southeast Asian country reporting record infection number as it battles the Delta variant. Daily cases in the past 30 days alone accounted for more than fifth of the country's total infections of over 2.1 million, while deaths have exceeded 34,000. Tropical storm comes on bring floods flow to several areas in the Philippines. Local disaster official says heavy rains caused by tropical storm flooded several low-lying villages in the Philippines. The nature disaster also caused several roads in the capital were impossible due to the floods and traffic jam. Footage taken by Ray Buhai shows a river overflowing and flooding nearby houses in Binang, Laguna Province, south of Manila. <laughs> Heavy rains from tropical storm Konson lashes provinces south of the Philippines capital, which caused heavy floods and damaged structures in some cities. Tropical storm Konson, with gusts up to 150 km per hour, struck central Philippines. <laughs> State Weather Bureau, Pagasa, says it has since moved to the main island of Luzon and is forecasted to weaken as it exits the Philippines' landmass. No casualties have yet been reported, but the National Disaster Agency is looking into reports of five missing fishermen. Thailand argues Prime Minister to resign before members of Parliament stand up, votes distrust his government on handling of pandemic. Several thousand people gathered in Bangkok to call for the resignation of Prime Minister Prayut Chan Ocha one day before lawmakers hold a no confidence vote over his government's handling of the COVID 19 pandemic. Activists vow to defy coronavirus ban on big gatherings and stage street protests daily until Prayut leaves office. Protests against Prayut have gathered steam since late June as university students who sought his removal last year returned with broader support from other political groups and people angered by a worsening coronavirus situation. A big rally is planned when parliament is due to hold the censure vote. This is expected to go Prayut's way because of his coalition's clear majority in the House. Former Army Chief of 2014 coup leader Prayut and his ministers have rejected the opposition's allegation of corruption, economic mismanagement, and a bungled coronavirus response. The overwhelming majority of Thailand's COVID-19 cases, 1.24 million and 12,374 deaths, came after April. It has since been hit by the Alpha and the Delta variants and has struggled to get hold of enough vaccines. Police says more than 600 people face protest-related charges for various violations in July and August. Bangkok launches COVID-19 vaccination bus to serve the elderly as cases rise in the country. Bangkok unveils a mobile vaccination bus aimed at serving seniors people with disabilities and other chronically ill people in the Thailand capital as the country ramps up its inoculation drive amid the surge in coronavirus infections.
The resident, Manat Pumklahan, says more than 1,000 people could be vaccinated each day by a team of about half a dozen health workers on the bus. The idea is to reach people with mobility issues who may have difficulty traveling from their homes. I think this initiative benefits local communities that have people that can't really travel to the vaccination centers. I can't really travel much, it's not convenience for me, but it has made it so much more easier for me. The event is a test run for the bus, but official says it will eventually move around to different neighborhoods each day. At least 16.5% of the Thailand population has been fully vaccinated, while 38.75% has had their first doses. Thailand reports 14,176 new cases and 228 deaths, bringing the total cases to over 1.3 million and 13,511 deaths since the outbreak started last year. China will donate more than 100 million doses of COVID-19 vaccine to developing countries by the end of the year. Chinese President Xi Jinping says China will donate 100 million more doses of COVID-19 vaccines to developing countries within this year, on top of a donation of 100 million United States dollars of COVAX. I'd like to announce that China will donate 100 million more doses of vaccine to developing countries by the end of the year. China will strive to provide a total of 2 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccines to the world by the end of this year. She made the announcement in Beijing while addressing the 13th BRICS summit via video link. He says China has provided vaccine and corresponding technical support for the countries in need. So far, they provide more than 1 billion doses of finished and bulk vaccines to over 100 countries and international organizations. China hopes Afghanistan can find suitable development path benefiting lasting peace and stability. A Chinese envoy to the United Nations expresses the hope that Afghanistan will be able to make the right choice and find a development path that is suited with its national conditions. Deng Shuang, Chinese deputy permanent representative to the United Nations, tells to the Security Council that the Taliban has announced the formation of an interim government in Afghanistan, a necessary step toward restoring order and post-war reconstruction. According to Gang Dat, over the past 20 years, Afghanistan's peace and development have been fraught with twists and turns and challenges. 20 years on, terrorist forces in Afghanistan have not been eradicated and the Afghan people have been denied development and dignity and been teetering between poverty and instability. Gang told the Security Council that Afghanistan today stands at a historic crossroads, calling on the international community to play a constructive role in Afghanistan's peaceful reconstruction. The Chinese representative says the international community should urge and help the Taliban to honor its commitments in areas of politics, development, counter-terrorism, counter-narcotics and human rights, and prevent Afghanistan from again becoming a hotbed of terrorism and base for terrorists, said Geng Shuang. China, on its part, will provide Afghanistan with vaccines, medicines, food supplies and assistance in building projects to meet the immediate needs of the Afghan people and help improve their livelihoods. During the Security Council meeting, Deborah Leong's UN Secretary General's Special Representative for Afghanistan raised concerns about the existing threat of terrorism in Afghanistan. According to Deborah Dad, the United Nations work in Afghanistan will not be interrupted and will continue to offer necessary humanitarian aid to the Afghan people. Representatives from many other countries also underscored humanitarian assistance and called on the Taliban to respect women's rights. Japan extends COVID-19 emergency restrictions in Tokyo and other regions until end of this month. Japan extends emergency COVID-19 restrictions in Tokyo and other regions until the end of this month to curb infections and prevent hospitals from being overwhelmed. 
the extension of ratified earlier by an advisory panel, Prime Minister Yoshihide Suga says it is need to shore up a medical system still stretched by serious cases, even though new infections were falling and vaccinations were rising. The number of severe cases and the strain of the medical system have not eased sufficiently in Tokyo and surrounding areas to allow restrictions to be lifted. The measures will not stretch until September 30, including for Osaka in the West. Japan's emergency carps ask restaurants to close early and refrain from serving alcohol. Residents are being urged to work from home as much as possible and refrain from travel. Some signs of improvement around Japan mean two prefectures out of 21 will move from state of emergency measures to more targeted restrictions, and a number of other prefectures will remove all carps. Tokyo's new daily coronavirus infections totaled 1,834. Japan has reported around 1.6 million cases and 16,436 deaths, but the death rate has declined in the latest outbreak. The 1% fatality rate compares with 1.6% in the United States and 1.6% in Britain. And that's the whole news for today. Remember to continue maintaining the health protocols, stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great days ahead.